Hello and welcome to another video. In this video we're going to be talking about Domain 3 cryptography terminology. So let's jump right into it. Now if you remember we have another video on encryption and in this video we talk about something called an algorithm. An algorithm is really just a formula and with encryption you have something called a key that's a bit of randomness that's added to the algorithm to make sure that the output is unpredictable. So one of the first terms is key length. Key length is simply a number. And you have this other term here, key size. And these two are interchangeable. Key length and key size, they're the same thing. And this is a number that's described in bits. So you have a bit length or a bit size. So for example, AES is Advanced Encryption Standard. It has a 128-bit key length. It also has a 128-bit block size. And I don't know if you need to know this for the exam or not. But you can also have a key length of 256 and so on. The block size will always be 128, but your key length is going to be measured in bits. Key space, on the other hand, is simply a number, and it's a huge number because this represents the number of combinations of a given key. So, for example, we talked in our last slide about 128 bit for advanced encryption standard. So, for example, your standard formula will, and this is overly simplified, and I apologize for those of you who understand cryptography perfectly, you would have a message and then you would add the algorithm, such as AES-128, and then you would have your key. In this case, we'd have a key that's 128-bit. Your key space is how many different combinations you would have to guess in order to guess the key, or how many possible combinations of different key possibilities there are. I'm not sure exactly how to articulate that. But anyway, that's, that's basically what it is. So in our last example, AES-128, your key space is going to be displayed as a number here, just a number, 2 to the 128th power. Some additional terms here. Cryptogram is the same thing as ciphertext. Transposition and permutation are the same thing. Transposition basically means that you're rearranging the letters. So your, your original message is just going to look like alphabet soup. Speaking of alphabets, you have this term here, alphabetic. You have monoalphabetic or polyalphabetic. Monoalphabetic means you're using one alphabet for your encryption algorithm, or polyalphabetic, which means you're using multiple alphabets for your algorithm, for your characters. So now we get into what is encoding. Encoding is simply taking something like this, me this simple message here that says hi, and you're transforming it into something that's machine readable. Encryption is basically the same principle, however you have the added randomness of a key or just an additional value that's put into the formula. Decoding is the reverse, where you're taking something that's machine readable, you're throwing it through some kind of algorithm, and it's spitting out something that's human readable. And on the same note, decryption is the same principle, but you have this randomness of a key that's inserted in here. Key is unknown. It goes into the formula and that allows it to uh, decrypt the message. Encryption and decryption are for the purposes of, of confidentiality, so remember that. And I've actually seen interview questions, job interview questions, about what the difference is between encoding and encryption, so make sure you know that. A hash is a one-way function, a one-way cryptographic function that takes a message like this and it feeds it through an algorithm and it spits out a fixed length of a number or a value out here. So for example, you would have your message high and you would have your algorithm this blue thing and I tried to cross out the key I guess it doesn't look like it's making much sense here and then you'd have your ciphertext which is just your fixed length value so the key difference between hash and an encryption is that you have a fixed length output and it's a one-way function typically doesn't have a key and I know there's some exceptions to that but we're not going to get into that in this video Collision is when you have two different messages that are sent through a hashing algorithm that generate the same output. For example, if you have this message high and you feed it through a hashing algorithm and it transmits or translates into this fixed output that says guppy, and then you take another input message, you feed it through the same algorithm and it comes up with the same output, that's called a collision and that's something that you want to avoid. The next term is initialization vector. Initialization vector is simply a bit of randomness that you're going to add to your algorithm. And again, the M is for message. You add the initialization vector, a little bit of randomness. You add it to the algorithm, then you add the key in there, and then you come out with the ciphertext. For example, the word hi is our message. We're going to feed it through an algorithm. Our algorithm is here, but before we feed it through the algorithm, we're going to put a little bit of randomness. Of course, there's our key, and there's our ciphertext, but in this particular, the initialization vector is a little bit of randomness that's added to the beginning 
I believe it's here in the beginning anyway. You can correct me if you want in the, in the comments. And this is, of course, done by the crypto system. Confusion? Confusion is when you change the keys between each round of encryption. A round is just when it runs the encryption algorithm. So for example, if you have, here's your formula, you have this message high, and you run it through your algorithm with your key, it's gonna generate some ciphertext. And then you're gonna, to, to make it even more complicated to guess, you're gonna run it through another round. So you're gonna take the ciphertext, it's gonna become your new message, and you're gonna run it through another round, a second round of encryption. And you've got your message here, and then you have your algorithm and your key, and then it's gonna generate your next set of ciphertext. Key one, key two, ciphertext, so on and so forth. Diffusion is when you rearrange the letters of the ciphertext, the characters of the ciphertext, or I'm sorry, the plain text. Basically rearrange the letters of the characters of the message before you run it through the encryption algorithm. So, or cryptographic function. So for example, you take this message here and you rearrange the characters, then you feed it through your algorithm, give it the key, and it comes up with your output here. So you essentially have a new message and then you run it through the algorithm. Avalanche is simply when a small change in the plain text results in a large change in the ciphertext. So, for example, here's the unchanged message, hello. It runs through your algorithm with your key, and it generates the ciphertext, just the number sign or the hashtag, whatever it's called. Let's make a small change to the message. Let's delete one of the L's. So now we have hello or hello with one L. We're going to run it through our algorithm. We're going to give it a key. And as you can see, our ciphertext has changed quite a bit. Key clustering is similar to a collision, but it refers to, I believe, encryption. So for example, it's, it's when you have a message that produces the same ciphertext from a different key. So for example, we have this message, we run it through our algorithm, we give it a key, and it generates the ciphertext. Here's your formula, message, algorithm, this key one, and our ciphertext here. Let's give it a different key. Here's the message, here's our algorithm. We put a different key in there and it's gonna generate the same ciphertext. So that's called key clustering. Once again, thanks for watching. Head over to cissprep.net where we have over 1200 practice questions and our free super study guide. Thanks and have a great day.